Dear friends, welcome back to Automate with Rakesh. In this video, we are going to learn a very specific technique around the state machine. Here you see a transition activity that is connected from the state machine to the final state. If you click on this transition, there is a section called trigger section. So how to utilize the trigger section, I'm going to show you in this video. So here our topic is around the trigger section of state machine. Now there could also be a question in the transition, how many different sections are there? What is your answer? So here we have a trigger section, condition section and action section. Remember that in a trigger activity, there are three sections. One is known as trigger section. Second one is condition. And the third one is action. Okay, trigger, condition and action. Now let us go through a demo, which is going to explain how this trigger, condition and action can be utilized. Now for this, we have to take some demo. What is the demo? Here is my application. In this application, if anyone clicks on the submit button, what is it? Because I'm using trigger, right? So if anybody clicks on the submit button, the click trigger should get activated and once the click trigger get activated, it should move to the final state. Getting it? Anybody clicking on the submit button will activate the transition. So it, from here, it will flow to final state. Okay. Now for that, the very first thing we will do in the entry section, I'm going to add the activity use application browser activity. Let me drag and drop this. Here, I'm going to click on indicate and I'm going to indicate this application. Done. Now, once I have indicated the application, I'll go to the next. Here, there's a transition. Inside this transition, the very first activity I'm going to drag and drop is the trigger scope activity. Because you know, all the trigger activity needs to be kept inside the trigger scope. Okay, so I'm saying trigger scope. And here is the trigger scope activity. This trigger section, I'm going to drag and drop a trigger scope activity. After that, here I have to drag a trigger activity, for example, click trigger. Here our demo is around click trigger. So I'll drag and drop the click trigger activity. Here let's indicate element on screen and indicate the submit button. Done. So it has indicated the submit button. After that, after that, in the trigger scope activity, there is also a section called arcs and action section. Okay. Here there is a sequence, there is a blank sequence by default. In this one, let me drag and drop an assign activity. And here, let me create a Boolean variable called clicked, which is going to store if somebody clicking on the submit button, the value will become true. It will come to the action section. So when this click trigger get activated, it always comes to the action section. And here, whatever you have defined, it is going to work. So here I have used a Boolean variable called clicked. So let's change the variable type to Boolean. And let's set the this one to state machine, the scope. All right. Here, let me put a value called true, the Boolean value true. By default, I will keep the clicked value as false, the default value. All done. Now, the moment anybody clicks, what happens? The clicked variable is going to get the value called true because once it is clicked, it will move to the action section and here it will get gain the value. After that, in the transition activity, there is the next section called condition. In the condition section, I'm going to say clicked is equal. So you can simply write the variable or else you can simply also say true. If the clicked value becomes true, then I want to log a message. And I'm going to say user clicked on submit button. So it is going to log it and I'm going to keep it as information. Simple. Now you have learned how to use the trigger section and you have also learned how to use the condition section and action section. Okay. Now, if the condition meets, then it should enter the final state. In the final state, let's add one more log message activity. And here I will say entered the final 
state. These experiments are very important so that you understand how the workflow logically flows from one section to the other section in the state machine. So now we have understood here I have kept only very simple activity called use open. It will just open that application. And once it has opened the application, if it is already open, it will leave it as it is. You know, right, there are a couple of properties that you can also utilize. For example, this one, I will say open if not open. We can set all this done. And next it will come to the transition where it will continuously monitor the submit button. Anybody clicking on the submit button, then it will come to the action section. And here the value is getting true. And here I'm put a condition click this equal to true, then it will come to the log message saying user clicked on the submit button. Pretty simple workflow. Now after this, let me quickly debug this so that we understand how the workflow is working. All right. All right. So the automation started running. Now let's see the status. So here, this is the application. You can see it has started running. So I'll go here and it has been activated, right? You can see it is executed. That means the application is currently open. Now it is continuously going to monitor if somebody is going to click on submit button. Let me go here and open the transition. Now the transition you can see it is continuously monitoring. Now there's one important thing that I forgot. That is when you use a click trigger, it continuously monitor. Now to break that sequence of monitoring, you must use a break activity. Very important point to break the sequence of your trigger scope activity, you have to use a break activity. So it breaks, so it breaks the loop and goes to move on to the next section. Otherwise it will be always be inside that section. So let me debug it once again. Okay. All right. So the automation has started. You can see the browser is already open. So it got executed. And then if I go to the transition section, here it is just waiting if somebody is going to click on the submit button or not. Now let's say I'm going to click here. See, nothing is going, nothing, nothing is working, right? You can see this activity did not run yet. Now the moment I'm going to hit on submit, look at it. If I'm going to hit on submit, look at it. I'll keep it this side. I'm going to click on submit. And what would happen? This click is, this click trigger activity is waiting. The moment I hit on submit, look at it, what's going to happen? Submit, you can see it has immediately came to this particular section. And now if you look at your output, it said user clicked on the submit button, entered the final state. So it has entered the final state where we have kept that activity, log message activity. So if you look at the output, all these things has happened. So now what happened, your workflow has moved from this state to the final state as per the transition that you have kept. So in the transition, the condition was simple. We have used a trigger scope and it has monitored whether somebody is clicking on the click button or not. Based on that, the value has been transferred to the click variable. And then based on the condition, it logged it and it went to, it went to final state. Pretty simple. Please do try this out. I'm going to show you one of the questions that is there in the UiPath Academy practice test. Let's answer that.